okay so recording has been started so i will share my screen okay so yeah so so we have provided the detailed documentation so task 1b this task is about georeferencing aerial image using qgis so before starting with this task, uh, I would recommend you to go through the resources. So we have given various resources here. So first go through the introduction to GIS resources. So this, this documentation introduces what GIS is. So GIS basically stands for Geographic Information System or Geographic Information Science. So GIS is all about spatial data. So, so spatial data means it's related to the geographic location of uh, the particular area. So it's geographic data. So spatial data that creates, so GIS is used to uh, create, manage, and analyze uh, the data. So and the maps that all are required for the analysis. Okay, so GIS connects uh, data to the map. Uh, so you can connect your data, like the spatial data, with the map. So whatever Google Map you see, it's a part of GIS. So history. So so history uh, in 1854 there was a epidemiologist epidemiologist sorry for the pronunciation so john's name john snow so he wanted to uh, detect the chlorella uh, cholera outbreak so cholera is epidemic disease uh, uh, which was uh, so it, it was uh, located in the london like london area so he, he wanted to find what was the root causes so what he did is he took the map of the area, he took the various uh, other data like the nearby water sources and all, and he tried to find how the disease is spreading, like how the epidemic uh, disease is spreading, so how the epidemiology uh, outbreak is spreading. So this is the map that he drew. So this was the first time when uh, geographic information system was being used for practical applications. So this was the start of uh, GIS journey. So then various uh, research happened and uh, we have full fledged GIS today. So GIS data sources. So data sources are the data that we require for doing GIS analysis. So, so most of the uh, time goes on uh, like uh, acquiring the data. So data, getting the good data is uh, itself a very complex and very, very time consuming task. So it takes 80% of the cost, like 80% of the cost is spent to get to capture the good, good amount of data for doing analysis so so this that's that so and uh, the primary data of uh, gis is remote sensing so remote sensing is the other domain uh, which is a subset of gis like there is intersection between a remote sensing and gis so these are the two different domains so remote sensing is when you acquire data remotely without going to that particular area like satellite image so whatever satellite data you get it's a remote data right so you are not uh, uh, having a particular in situ sensor on the particular location. So you are having satellite in the space and you are capturing various data like uh, satellite image and uh, for communication purpose and whatever you require for your application. So satellite image is a remote sensing data. Then you have LIDAR. So nowadays we have uh, 3D point clouds LIDAR. So LIDAR is the laser detection, range, detection and ranging. So, so you are using laser or light beam to get the data, like a 3D data of a particular uh, location. And uh, you are also using GPS to find the location, uh, specifically GNSS, global navigation system, and uh, uh, use digital for aerial photography. So nowadays we use uh, we use drones. Like we, the same itself is all about this sentinel uh, drone. Like we are using aerial images to do a survey on a particular area. So that's the theme all about. So, and secondary data is like TEMs, digital elevation models. So these are the data that is required by the satellites to have the, know the altitude of a particular location. And you also use CAN paper maps. So initially, uh, this technology was not there, GIS was not there. So uh, people used to draw a map on a paper. So those, are, those people are called cartographers. So they used to use various scales and geometrical uh, uh, techniques to draw maps on the paper. So you didn't uh, have satellites at that time before 17th or 18th century. So yeah, so that was that. And application. So applications, as you can see from the image, 
So this is a drone which is trying to capture data of uh, agricultural field. So you can do analysis on agricultural field like uh, uh, like you can take images like normal image is a RG and D band. So basically images what we see is the visible uh, bands that we or eyes can visit. Uh, but there are various electromagnetic spectrum as you know our electromagnetic spectrum is used from uh, ultrasonic like infrared and uh, what like so so the entire uh, electromagnetic spectrum we our eyes are not capable to see it but we can only see a uh, visible ring which is optic, uh, optical band of electromagnetic spectrum so basically the normal image that you take from your any camera mobile phone or any camera it's a three band image red green and blue but in satellite, uh, there are various bands like for particular uh, object. So we know the basic principle that uh, uh, the whatever uh, light it reflects, we can see through our eyes. Like, so whatever we see, the color images uh, we see through our eyes is the reflected light from the, from the object. So it's a reflected light from R, G and D. So three colors mixtures are formed and we see various different shades from that. So satellite images uh, like satellite sensors whatever sensors are mounted to the satellites so there are also other bands that uh, so you must have heard about thermal imaging right so thermal imaging is being done in the infrared band so our eyes are not capable to see it so but what we do is we try to convert those band into some visible color so that we can interpret from the data so so here in the example here so you can see the drone is trying to capture the agricultural field it's trying to do analysis like uh, what crop are grown like uh, you can also see how what is the health of the crop and all that so use different bands like normally infrared band is being used to do analysis on the agricultural uh, or the vegetation part and then next application is the urban development suppose you are planning an urban city let's say mumbai city so you need to do, do a survey on a particular city you need to know uh, like the location or a particular uh, area where you are project is to be like suppose the architect wants to like the builder wants to some organization want to build a building so so you need to plan properly like uh, how it is sustainable like uh, how it's sustainable and uh, it's not destroying the environment so all that matters like it's urban planning so this is the domain of urban planning we use this data to do analysis on uh, the particular area then is uh, mining so this is a mining area so you fly an aerial image or a satellite uh, use from a satellite image you can find out which place is uh, good for mining like what materials can be found there so all that now is possible through satellites like even satellites there are various types of sensors that are used so this this data you can uh, acquire from the satellite and then you can do analysis on the uh, gis like gis technology like gis is basically a technology which is used to uh, uh like do analysis on the spatial data and next image uh, can you tell what image is this uh, in the chat yeah covid yeah it's a uh, covid data so last two years we have we must have been frequently visiting visiting this uh, website to see what's the COVID count, where it's uh, increasing and surging. So yeah, so that is uh, so this map you see. So it's GIS. So it's what it's basically doing. It's trying to do is it's taking the data and trying to uh, plot it on a map so that you can visualize it. So it's trying to get data like the spatial data. Let's say uh, in India, you're getting particular cases from particular area. It's trying to create a blob like a circular area which represent how much COVID uh, cases are there. So bigger the blob means the, the cases are more. So this is the visualization that is being possible due to GIS. And uh, next is, uh, can anyone tell what application it, is this? Like many of us have used this application. Like this is an Indian company. Yeah, Zomato, right, yeah, so Zomato. So, so in Zomato, you see like uh, whenever you order a food, you uh, you order to a specific platform, like you, you order of a specific restaurant. So the Zomato uh, in the map, there is a, uh, a visual that you see where your delivery agent is, where is uh, like what the status. So all this is possible. Even the delivery agent uh, 
can see a similar uh, visual in his screen so that he can find the shortest path to your destination. So all this is possible through GIS like uh, tracking, navigation and finding the shortest route. It's called as routing basically. So routing is also uh, the application of GIS. So GIS is a vast amount of application like you say what domain and uh, you can find application everywhere. Uh, so even uh, let's say uh, whatever insurance like many of us uh, uh, know what insurance is right. So in insurance company is also using GIS today like so let's say uh, so insurance company has given insurance to a farmer and uh, now the company wants to provide insurance as per the uh, losses that farmers have affected due to the floods, drought or anything. So then the insurance company will do analysis on the GIS. It will try to find out like how much uh, amount they will be paying and how much like it's so insurance is uh, basically profit based company like it's financial profit based company. So they need to find how they can make profit by giving insurance to the uh, customer. So they can they use GIS to do analysis nowadays and it's a very big market like this GIS technology is now becoming a a uh, very big market like uh, uh, most of the domains are adopting GIS tags. Okay, so next is so this was all about applications. There are n number of applications. So I have covered only few four or five applications here. Uh, so you can also think of any application in your mind. Uh, next is a concept of spatial data. So I will be trying to cover very uh, few concepts like not the detailed concept will take uh, a uh, very long time if I talk more on the GIS technology stack. So I'll be trying to uh, clear the concepts which are basically required uh, for doing basic analysis on GIS and also for the theme, uh, for our theme. So concept of spatial data. So spatial data as I told it's a geographical data so which is dependent on the geographical area. So, so, we, uh, so normally a data model is a type like a representation of logical organization of any data. So in GIS, we normally have two types of data, raster and vector. So raster is basically, uh, so in the image you can see, uh, raster, this is a raster. So this is a meme that I got on some social media platforms. So I try to not uh, put here. So this is a raster and this is a vector. So, so we'll be covering what is raster and vector. So for now, just remember these images. And then, yeah, so raster model. So basically raster model is a, grid of cells like uh, uh, it's a pixelated image so you can call it as a pixelated image so our image is a raster format like here you can see this is an image so this, this this shape is an image so it's a grid of cells is a, uh, or a normal image whatever rgb image or a, any image you see it's a raster format so so raster image uh, digital imagery from uh, uavs satellites lidar uh, radar imaging so all those are rasters so, so, so raster is like uh, you have a specific grids and you have values at that specific grid. So from this image, you, it's clear that this is a satellite image. And if you try to zoom it, you will get some grids. So these are, so this small grids we call as pixels. So, so every pixel has its value. So, yeah. So, so, so disadvantage of raster is that you cannot zoom it after a certain extent. So try zooming in any image. So after a certain extent, you will see the images getting blurred. So you are not getting uh, the details of a uh, particular image after a certain extent. So that's the resolution, the maximum resolution of that image that is possible. So after that, the re maximum resolution, resolution, minimum resolution, you you, were, you will not able to get the details from that image. Next, next is vector data. So vector data is a new type of data. So it is represented using geographical shapes like it's points, lines and areas. So in Google map, like whenever you try to search, so you can zoom it to any extent, right? So have you tried zooming your Google map, not the Google satellite image, I'm telling Google map. Uh, can anyone reply? So have you tried zooming it uh, in a Google map? So does it get blurred? Uh, yeah, does it get blurred? Uh, yes. Yeah, no, no, yeah. So Google map, when if you zoom it, it doesn't get blurred. So that is due to this vector model. So Google uses this vector model data, vector data model. So vector data model is represented using geographical shapes, points, lines, and polygons. So, so that's why uh, 
you can zoom it to any extent. So those are like, like, like the shapes. It's not the image. Those are not the images, the pixels you see in the normal image. So it's a geometrical shape. So you zoom it, it will try to create more detailed version of that particular geometric shape. You zoom more, it will try to give an even more uh, detailed version of the geometrical shapes. So there is no blurring uh, while using this vector data model. So, so it has its various applications. Like sometimes you may need raster data, sometimes you may need vector data. Let's say I want to find the uh, uh, all the railway routes in India. So what do you think, which is the better version, like the raster or the vector? Vector, yes. So vectors, there are three types, points, lines, and polygons, as I said. So points are defined by XY coordinates. So it's basically the latitude and the longitude of the particular area. So lines basically connect those two points. It's defined by the connecting uh, between the two points. And polygons is like a straight lines connecting all the points and to the start. So you can get various polygon shapes using uh, polygons. So, uh, yeah, so that is vector layer. Yeah. So these are vector layers and raster layers. Uh, so those are the two main uh, data types that uh, we normally use in GIS application. And uh, next is uh, geographic coordinate system. So, so uh, do you know what's the shape of our earth is? Like, is it spherical, elliptical, what's the shape? Can anyone mention? Yeah, someone mentioned, right. Uh, maybe you uh, attended a previous session uh, before the uh, team, right? Yeah. yeah, the shape of our Earth is not particularly ellipsoid or spherical. So it's uh, like somewhere the Earth is uh, bulging, somewhere it is uh, going down. So that's why the shape we call it is a geoid. It's not particular spherical, it's oval shape and then we have complex surface over that so earth is not perfectly elliptical or a uh, ellipsoid yeah it's a shape is geoid and uh, so yeah now we need to find the location so for location system we are using latitude and longitude system so latitude and longitude so what is latitude so first let's uh, go through the latitude so uh, Latitudes are basically uh, parallels and uh, uh, parallels are equally spaced between the equator and the poles. So, uh, so in the image you can see here, so this is the pole, these are the two poles, north pole and the south poles. So these are the parallel lines that are uh, passing from the north pole to the south. So these are called latitudes. So these are spaced almost equidistant uh, from each other. Uh, yeah, so these are also called as parallels. So this is a parallel. And uh, meridians are uh, uh, space farthest apart at the equator and converge at a single pole. So these are meridians, also called as longitude. So, so this connect North Pole and the South Pole. So you can see from the figure here, it's uh, bulging towards the equator and uh, it's converging towards the poles. So that's the uh, longitudes. And uh, Parallels and longitude cross each other at a right angle. So, so these both cross each other at right angles. So this uh, center of the parallel is called as the equator. So we call it as the equator. And the center of this uh, uh, longitude we call it as a prime meridian. And uh, yeah, so that was all about the location system that uh, uh, geologists have found out few uh, like few years ago to uh, find the location of this uh, spatial analysis of the geographic data. And uh, then we have map projection system. So, so these are the geographic coordinate system. So let's say I want to find the geographic location of any particular city, let's say IIT Bombay. So then I need certain geographic coordinate system uh, to find the exact location of that. So, so it's trying to map our uh, entire earth, like the geoid shape of the earth. And it's trying to find the exact uh, position on that uh, shape. So that is geographic coordinate system. And next is map projection system. So now we have geographic coordinate system. We want to uh, have this, uh, like the earth is a joint shape, which is elliptical type, but uh, we want to have it on a paper. The so paper is a plain paper or a screen or a computer screen. So we want that in a flat uh, computer screen. So then we need to project that, like the 
the shape of the earth is the uh, geoid and we want to project it so for projecting it we need to do some projection we need some projection system so various geologists and uh, cartographer have plan have uh, use various uh, projection systems and there are certain standard projection systems so these are conic uh, so, so particular projection system is good for particular location so so you can't get the particular uh, like the shape of earth you, if you're trying to project it on a plain paper so you, you can't get the exact shape of a particular continent or particular uh, country because uh, you are trying to project it so somewhere the shape will change like uh, so it, it, won't, it won't be the exact shape that you uh, have it on the paper so there are various projection system trying to find the best fit of a particular projection so those are the map projection system there are conical cylindrical lesometry so you can search on if you want you can search more about on this and then is georeferencing so yeah so now this is the main part that is required for this task georeferencing so georeferencing is a method of assigning real world coordinates to each pixel of the raster the raster is the normal image so so normal image what you capture from your phone you don't have a uh, like the lat long of particular so of all the pixels so you normally there is a concept of geo tagging so nowadays uh, we have gps on our mobile phones and when we capture data if you turn on your gps and uh, after saving the data if you go on the properties you may be able to find the lat long like that's a lat long where you have taken the image so that's why you are able to also plot this image on a google map and all so the jpeg format that is trying to save it also tries to save the latitude and longitude of the image that you have captured so that is different from georeferencing that is called geotagging so geotagging is getting the central location from where the image has been captured that's all in georeferencing so georeference image is like it has a, a latitude and longitude location of every pixel whatever the image is let's say you have uh, 100 by 100 pixels so so every pixel will have a lat long value so that is georeference image so we so normally the satellite images or the google whatever google satellite images or any satellite images you see so those are georeference so whenever you plot it on a map it will exactly overlay on that map so that is georeferencing so satellite images provided by various space agencies do, so they provide you the georeference image so but now whatever you you will be doing it's the aerial image right so aerial image is not georeference so you need to georeference it satellite agency does it for the satellite image now you need to do it for the aerial image so aerial image will try to capture an image and you, you need to georeference it so for that you need certain uh, image or certain uh, other map which is already georeferenced so you can take it as a base and you georeference your the data that you need to georeference it like the data which is not georeferenced so you take a base map or a base image and try to georeference it with the base map so in this task uh, we have provided you uh, a geotiff image so geotiff is basically a geographic tag image file format so the name itself says that it has a georeferencing like uh, it has the lat length position of every pixels so normally the satellite images uh, the most common satellite images format so there are various format of satellite images the most common format is geotiff so we have captured a geotiff image for you like uh, and uh, you need to use that geotiff image to reference a drone image so we have also provided you a drone image let's go to the task now okay till now any doubt you can ask from the chat any doubt any uh, small question if you have you can ask uh, my team was not according to the uh, uh, doubt regarding this session not the other, the other thing you can ask on the discourse uh, regarding this task one be whatever I would discuss yeah so GIS is geographic information system and GNSS is, GNS is, is global navigation satellite system. So G GNSS is for the locations like there are various constellation of satellites that are used to get the exact location on the earth surface. So that is GNSS. So GIS is a technology. It's a very broad technology like it has a 
as uh, almost all the applications you say you, you can use GIS then. So it's a technology stack. And GNSS is uh, remote sensing data that is being used for GIS. Geotagging and georeferencing difference. So the documentation I have mentioned it in detail. Geotagging is having a uh, lat long of a particular image. Like whatever image you capture from your phone, you get only particular lat long of that particular area, only one location. That is geotagging. And georeferencing is you get, so you need every pixels need to have a lat long position. That is your difference. Uh, next is the vector images are that good. Why some places take this JPEG? So, uh, vector images are geometrical shapes, as I said. So, it's not possible to store every fine, like every detailed uh, uh, elements from the raster image. So, in raster image, you have various different components. So, if you see an image, satellite image, you see various components, vegetations, land, buildings, surfaces, and whatnot. So all that detail, minute details, you will not be able to save it in a vector images. And dealing with vector images are little uh, like uh, time, like computationally expensive because you have a geometrical shapes. And when you do analysis in the GIS, you do various analysis. There are overlay analysis wherein you overlay various layers like the raster layer, vector layer, and do various analysis. That time, raster analysis are very complex to do, like computationally expensive. That's why we use raster when you get very detailed uh, elements. Difference between geographic and projected position. So as I said, geographic coordinate system is used to find the geographic uh, location. So it's the model. So various geologists have uh, made various models of the earth, the shape of the earth, and they try to uh, find that this is the shape of the earth and uh, by using uh, some geometry, they, they can find the exact location on that 3D model, like the, let's say our earth is uh, spherical, then uh, finding the location on that spherical shape. And projection is, uh, you need to have it on a paper. We can't uh, always have a globe and you can find a shape on that particular globe. So we need to have it on a paper or certain computers, uh, like computer screen. So we do project. So we project that, that spherical shape into a 2D plane. So that is projection coordinate system. Uh, can we repeat spatial data? So spatial data is uh, geographic data. So whatever the data which is look, uh, related to geographical area, that is spatial data. Uh, anything? Any more questions? Okay. Uh, next is, uh, let's go through the uh, slides. Okay, let's go through your slides. Uh, let's go through the task, sorry. Okay, so here the task is uh, to understand the GIS concepts and getting hands on QGIS software. So I hope everybody has installed QGIS. Okay, uh, is my QGIS script visible? Uh, can someone tell? Because I think it's sharing on a particular screen. I will try to share it again. Uh, is it visible? No. Is it visible now? I hope it's visible. Yes, okay. So, so this is QGIS. So QGIS is a software, open source software, which is used to do the GIS analysis. So, uh, okay. Uh, this is just a top menu bar. Okay, so yeah, so this is the screen that you see when you open the GIS tool. So here I'm able to see a top menu bar. Can someone know how can I hide it? It's disturbing me. Okay, just double click on the QGIS, so it will open it. 
so uh, you are you're using ubuntu so right now i'm using windows so that uh, it's easy for me to share screen and all this yeah so you use it on ubuntu system only because in future tasks we'll be using it with ros and all so in ubuntu system only you install qgis so it's mentioned in task 0 how to install qgis and all for for the related libraries okay so this is a qgis screen so here you can see let's create a new project so once you create a new project you will be seeing this uh, canvas so this is a canvas where you will be seeing all the data like the map the image whatever you are importing here in qgis so that you can see here and next is a browser so 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 particular versions have various layouts so you can also customize this layout for wherever you want like let's say some version browser will be in the top uh, bar some it, it will be on the bottom so it depends you can customize it so there are various options to do that okay so yeah so this this is a browser layer so browser layer is used to uh, connect it with a special database so so normal database is different from special database little different like in spatial database you have spatial related information so that's the uh, uh, difference between the normal database and spatial database so you can connect various spatial database so so we will not be discussing more about this so it will take more time if i get more into that so this this is used to connect the data external data or the spatial data required uh here in the browser and the layers panel you see all the layers that you have imported so i will be showing you uh, the layers that i will be importing and uh, how it is seen here and what you can do using those layers so all the layers that you do all the word analysis that you use here it is shown here in the layers panel and in the top uh, tool uh, top bar you will see various options like the toolbar this is a toolbar so you can have various tool saving options and all and uh, here you can see various options like saving project creating layout so layout is like creating the final uh, map let's say you create do all the analysis and you want to create a map let's say the covid map so whatever covid map you see you want to print it on a paper so you do all the analysis you uh, customize it as per your need you like have various uh, so there are various types of map you can uh, design so so once you design that map you can create a layout and print it so that map can be used uh, for your uh, any other applications so then we have edit you can create you can edit various options you have view so so in view you can have the fill zooms and all that options settings also there are various settings you can customize this uh, layout whatever you require like where you need this to be bars and all plugins so plugins is an important option so so in this you will be using a open street map so open street map is an open source map so like it's a google like google map so google map is a proprietary map developed by google so we will be using open source map because uh, applications is based on open source and google maps uh, doesn't uh, give you access to all the uh, analysis that we need so for that you need to install uh, a plugin so for installing plugin just go on plugins manage and install plugins it will take some time yeah so once it's done then search here quick osm quick map service sorry so quick map service so i have installed this just click on this and install so here you will be seeing the install option in your screen so once this is installed uh you can see it in the web so once you go in the web so here it was plugins then once it's installed go on the web Quick map service. So you will here will be seeing OpenStreetMap OSM standard, which is OpenStreetMap standard. So that is uh, the it will try to install few maps like OSM. Also try to uh, get some data, free open source data from NASA and all. So yeah, so that is. So there is also other may, way to install the maps that we'll be uh, discussing later. So then there is the vector. So as I told, vector layers. So you do analysis on the vectors. So there are various tools for doing analysis like geographical tools so geoprocessing tools like in vector it's a uh, as i told it's geometrical shapes so you can do various analysis uh, right now i'm not going in much detail like the geometrical shapes you can do various analysis like uh, uh, buffering creating buffer of that particular layer let's say you have a line 
and you want to have some buffer of that particular line shape so you can use buffer for that you can clip particular shape you can find a difference between those two shapes so these are used to do various analysis for your application you can also find union let's say i have two roads and want to find the uh, intersection of that road so you can use uh, various uh, these tools and union intersection options and all. Uh, there is a raster. Raster is basically the image data that you will be using. So, so here raster we have various analysis. So yeah, georeferencing is the main uh, tool that we'll be using here for doing analysis. You can do various various analysis. Uh, so these are basically image processing techniques that are being used here. So so you just the tools. So you just need to use those tools to do your analysis. So you can. Uh, do various projection analysis like you can change the projection as I discussed projection systems so you can create your own customized projection system for that so you can merge different rasters you can create extend extract a raster particular ex, uh, you can take a particular small image from a raster so you can do conversion from different uh, image format that is a database uh, you can connect different database so here you can uh, you can interface QGIS in different databases like Oracle, MongoDB. So there are a number of databases that you can interact. Then you have uh, so this web option is whatever plugins you install. So it will try to install few uh, web related plugins here. So so the so quick OSM the open source street map is a web based plugin. So that's why it's showing here in the web option. That is a mesh you can calculate uh, mesh analysis and all. You can do processing and all. So yeah, so those are the uh, tools that are being used. So we will be using few tools for our application now. Okay, so for importing a raster, so we have given you a satellite image. That satellite image is a very big image. So I hope you must have installed that image. So it's a, I guess 2 GB, 2.24 GB image. So it's a, so this satellite image has a very good resolution. So every pixel in that image is like a resolution of 30 centimeters. So 30 centimeter resolution means the uh, 30 centimeter on the ground is being represented by a single pixel. So that's the resolution of that's high. That's how high this this resolution of the satellite image is. So yeah, right now I want to import this satellite image in the layers. What I will do is simple option. Just click here, drag it. Same thing you will be doing here. There is also other option. You go to the layers and then add layers, add raster layers, and then you can select the uh, file but this is a quick option you can directly drag here your satellite image will see it. so you can see uh, how high resolution this image is like i can even see this ground uh, lines the fine grids of this lines and this cars and all yeah you zoom it it will take some time to get it like the uh, resolutions and uh, this is a particular uh, uh, city of us so yeah so this is how the satellite image looks like and uh, uh, yeah so i forgot to discuss this so there is a bottom layer where you see the uh, options like various uh, stats regarding this canvas so this is the uh, coordinate system so here whatever you see is a coordinate referencing system so this is the coordinate referencing system like whatever coordinates you get so yeah that is and here you see scale and uh, then you have resolution and uh, uh, here you can see the geographic reference system so i have selected so you need to select the geographic reference system as epsg 4326 that's the geographic reference system that you need okay so i will be showing you the steps but not the uh, exact output because i want you to try because if i show all these steps then there is no challenge like you just copy you just need to copy the steps so even i shared few tutorials on this so there is one tutorial which uh, shows how to georeference a map and a, uh, aerial in any other image so like, like georeferencing a map with an image so same case is here like you need to use a satellite image you need to georeference it with a aerial image so for this you need a uh, uh this i mean the georeferencer tool so for that so in some uh, uh 
QGIS software, you will find the georeferencer option here, the georeferencer plugin. But in few softwares, like the few latest versions, you will find it here. So don't need to worry, you can find it in, or you can directly click here, georeferencer. So here, this, this option is a quick search option. You can directly search here and click on it. But yeah, so I have the option here, georeferencer. I will click on this and here, so this is a georeferencer window where you will be georeferencing your image, the aerial image that you have. So right now, my aerial image, I have shared the aerial, uh, like this image has been shared in the task. So open raster. So I will open the raster, but that you can also open your PDF image, PNG, any format, image format or a PDF format here. So I'll be opening the format. I think I need to download it. I don't know where I kept that. Okay, so I have shared it in the uh, the stores forum. So I will try to download it quickly. Aerial image. So meanwhile, uh, you can ask any doubt if you have, like regarding QGIS interface. Okay, I've installed it. So So I will be importing it, file, downloads, and then area. Okay, so this is a PNG image that you see. So this is a drone based image. So this is not exactly a drone based image. So what I tried is, so what we have given is a part of that image. So basically the drone image will look in a similar fashion. Uh, so what you need to do is georeference this with a base map, so base image, base satellite image. So yeah. So what you will do is the uh, first you need to uh, create points. So you need to select the common points. So georeferencing means you need to match the features of this and the base image. So this is the image which is which is not georeferenced, and the satellite image that is being given to you is georeferenced. So what I will do is we will try to match this. So let's say I will try to match the features. So I want to match. Uh, yeah, is there any doubt? Uh, okay. Uh, sir, can you show how to add that image? Which image? Uh, you mean the satellite image? I will show you that again. Uh, from, from where did you drag and drop? So yeah, I have downloaded the satellite image. So I have given you the satellite image in the task one B. So you need to install, uh, download that. It's a very long file, two point two four GB. And directly just click at drag it. Like click on the folder uh, in Linux and drag it in the layers option. So this is the layers panel here. So uh, are you able to see this uh, georeferencing screen, right? Uh, georeferencing screen. Because I'm able to share the particular uh, tab. So that's why I'm asking. Uh, just reply yes or no uh, for georeferencing. Yeah, okay, fine. So yeah, next is, uh, okay. So I will show you again how I imported this aerial image. So, Okay, so go to the file, open raster, and the aerial image you must have downloaded somewhere in your folder. So I would recommend you to download in the folder where you are using the, the workspace where you use cross workspace. So install that and uh, just select this like uh, open raster and select the file. It will open it. So it will directly open here in the uh, georeferencer to window. And uh, yeah. The question my system get fresh when it's moving to four. I would not recommend you to use the uh, uh, VMware. Uh, QGIS itself needs a, also you are using ROS and uh, Gazebo system, so I wouldn't recommend you to. So, dual boot it and use Ubuntu. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, uh, we have imported the aerial image. Next, what we'll be doing is uh, uh, creating the common points. So those are called GCPs, ground control points. For that, you just click here. So for zooming and panning, there are various options. So I think you need to explore that. So this is a pan option. You can pan, just uh, move your uh, mouse, scroll down, scroll, uh, scroll in or scroll out. 
will be zooming or zooming out. So, so, so you need these uh, options more frequently pan, so the pan, zoom in, zoom out. So you can also click here or directly scroll your mouse. So the most common option that we'll be using for georeferencing it. So then you need to select the common points. So for selecting the common points, there is an option here, add point, click on it and select the common points. So you need at least four points. So I will tell you more than four points, six points is good, but at least four points to get the exact georeferencing of the image. So how this georeferencing is done is it's using affine transform, which is polynomial transform. I hope you must have studied it in your linear algebra class of your grade or you will be studying it. What you can explore affine transform, what affine transform is. So it tries to uh, use a polynomial equation, tries to tries to fit the other points. Let's say you give few points, we'll try to fit the other point. So this is how it works, your referencing. So uh, you mark the common points in the both the images. Let's say this is a ground, I'm marking a point here, uh, end of this point. And then I want to map the same mark point in the main map, like, like the main map. So I will go here and try to find the common points. So this is the base map. So I'm trying to find it. Yeah. Okay. So once I see the map is approximately same, like the point is approximately same. So you zoom and all like frequent zooming to find the more precise location and then select. Okay. So your GCP will be selected. So GCP is a point. So GCP is a point which is marked on both the images. So what it is trying to do is it is trying to map your pixel coordinates of a base image. So this is your base image, this is a drone image, and it will try to map the same uh, coordinate with the uh, satellite image. So this is a satellite image which has its lat long position here. So it will try to find the location. So it will try to give the lat long position uh, with the base image. So uh, noted point to be noted that this value will not be same for you. So don't try to exactly copy, follow these steps. Don't try to exactly uh, say, copy and say that this point is not matching for you. Know? So yeah, so it will depend upon how exactly you select the points and referencing system. So as I said, we will be using EPSG 4326 as a referencing system. So make sure you have selected it properly. Yeah, so I need four points. So first point I've selected, then I will select the second point. This is the second point. So select points in such a way that it covers the entire image. Or now I am selecting the most common points I see. Like you need at least four images as said. So yeah, I am using pan option here. So pan, zoom, and pan. Okay. Okay. Edit map on canvas. Zoom it and select the points. So I selected the endpoints, select OK. In a similar way, you select these four points. Uh, let's say I take some point here, the roof of this house. Select point, click from canvas. I think this was the house that we saw. Zoom it, zoom it, and find the more exact, precise location. Select OK. So, so more precise, you try to find the points like, uh, it's okay, there will be some tolerance error, but try to find it like exact location, both the base aerial uh, base map and the aerial image, base image of the aerial image. Yeah, so I've selected the few points. So once, so uh, right now I'm selecting three points. So yeah, as I told you, you need at least four points, but three points also work sometimes. So then you need to click on run. So it will start your referencing. So right now I'm not doing that. So I'm keeping it for you to do. Like it's very simple, just you need to do the settings. So for settings, you need to select. So you need to explore this, what linear transformation is. So I'm not covering this. Select linear, then resampling method, nearest and neighbor. So you can explore various other algorithms. You can explore on the Google also what other sampling method does and what other transformation method does. Select target, target SRS as WSG. Uh, EPSG 4326. So what EPSG 4326 is, it's a uh, geographic coordinate system, as I said, a uh, geographic referencing system, which in which various models have been created by uh, geologists. And uh, so EPSG 4326 is the most common referencing system, which fits almost 
every part of the country, like uh, it fits every part of the uh, world. So that, that's why we are using APSG 4326. And then uh, uh, output raster. So this is the file where you need to store, like in the folder where you need to store, you give it some name, you give the name of this file and click save, okay, and then run. So once you run this, it will start georeferencing it. And uh, in settings option, you can also say it in the load in QGIS when done. So take this, if you want to load the same georeferenced image. Uh, so once you click here, uh, it will try to create a georeferenced image. And if you want to load that, uh, so for this, you need to create load and save it. And you click it here, it will create a georeferenced image and you can see that georeferenced image in the layer. So, so right now I'm not saving this. So this is for just for the demo purpose. I want you to do that those steps. So it will be showing here the other layer. So that layer will be the georeference satellite image. So that uh, georeference aerial image, sorry. So that will be overlaid on this exact satellite image. So what you can do is you can turn on, turn off, and see whether it is georeferencing properly, whether it is overlaying it properly. So that layer will be overlaying somewhere here. So that you need to check. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's all for this uh, hands-on session. So, so what my aim was to, to just show you the, give you the gist about what QGIS is. I want to, you to explore more about it. So you can also add more other uh, uh, satellite images and all. So I have given a tutorial how to add the other satellite images. Like I have an idea of Google satellite image. So you need to go on XYZ tiles new connections and then the link I have mentioned that in the URL uh, in the resources and give the name and uh, you have various uh, other let's say I have Google satellite image so, yeah so you can turn on turn off various other uh, layers and you can also drag before this and uh, after this so that the topmost layer gets seen first so, so as this arena, like the satellite image is being uh, on the topmost, so it, it should overlay on the satellite image. So, so you can try this, like dragging, dragging out. Yeah. So that's all about this. So I've covered raster uh, images analysis most on this. So maybe in the next task, you will be you will need some vector uh, analysis, vector like not vector analysis. Just the vector file. So I can show you quickly show you how vector shape looks like. Uh, I have a vector shape. So I have the Indian Railway. So whatever Indian Railway route we have of all over India. Maybe this data is not so recent. It's uh, maybe some years back. It's not updated. So yeah, in the pink color, you see this is the. Okay, so I've turned on the position. Okay, so this region you see. So let's say I am uh, my this image gets spawned somewhere, and I want to go to the particular layer. For that, you just click on this and zoom to layer. So it will go to that particular uh, layer option and zoom it. Okay. So that is the vector file. So this is a line file. So you can see uh, various polylines. This is a line shape. So this so basically this uh, this vector format has its various format file formats. So this is the shape file, which is the most common used in uh, GIS vector analysis. And uh, let's say I overlay it with uh, Google satellite image. Yeah. So as you can see, the images get vector and raster. So below is a raster. Google satellite image is an image, right? It's a raster. It's, it gets overlaid exactly like you can see here, uh, gets exactly overlaid for each other. So I have kept Indian Railways shape file above this. If I kept below this, then I won't be able to see Indian Railways because satellite image is overlaying above it. So I will keep it above like satellite image below and uh, uh, Indian Railways above in shape files. Okay. So there is also OpenStreetMap. So as you installed OpenStreetMap, so OpenStreetMap is open source map as I said. So this is a vector format, right? So Indian Railways. Uh, We'll be keeping it above it. Uh, you can also change the shape and all. So you can explore that, but not required for this task. Yes. Okay, this is OpenStreetMap. Sorry, 
uh, just go to the properties symbology and change the color which way it's not visible in the which way i'm taking it dark red take a black dark black dark black is already there let's see color dark black okay apply okay so yeah so whatever red color uh, marking you say is the indian railways over a open ship so open ship map is a map which is a vector file so we are overlaying vector over vector here yeah so that is all about this uh, hands-on tutorial you can explore more in qgis so for this task we at least need a raster analysis part zero reference part okay yeah so if any doubts you can ask in the chat i will be clearing it now okay so i'll be stopping my screen share uh or it okay uh, i'm first clear it out so can we record this your recording is going on okay so after completing the task one be how to upload a task so we will be sharing the instructions how to upload a task uh instruction will be updated soon yeah how to import base image? I think that's clear. Sir, two upper group members are unable to install Ubuntu. No, I wouldn't recommend you to use me. Uh, okay, any other doubts? Okay, I hope this session is uh, useful to you. Yeah, recording is going on. Uh, we are recording this session. Yeah, UI of QGIS is different. Uh, it will be almost same. Uh, won't be that different. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like the tools are at the same place. Places. Is the extension of georeferenced images QGIS? Uh, QGIS QGIS is the extension of the project file that you save. Once you save the project QGIS project, it will be QGIS project file. Georeferenced image has a .dot tiff or there are also other format. So dot gtif is the common format or dot tiff is the common format of a georeference image. Georeference is not in Ubuntu. Uh, that won't be possible. As I told, there are two places where georeference tool you can find. So one is the uh, in previous version, it was in the layer options in the tools, and in the, in the newer version, it is in the raster uh, option in the tool toolbar. Uh, can you tell what to do in task B? I, I think that was all about this session. So it was you referencing the image. Uh, not showing even when searching. Uh, yeah, sometimes the search options in the QGIS doesn't work. So that's why you first search in the toolbar. So once you uh, get in the toolbar, you can use it. And it will be there in the toolbar. Your referencing tool is there in almost all the versions of QGIS. Uh, tell about task 1a. So task 1a we will be having different live session where we will be covering uh, only task 1a related uh, stuff. Sir, we are instead of download GrassGIS, is it same? No, GrassGIS is different, QGIS is different. So I have told you install QGIS. So GrassGIS is the library which is used by QGIS. So it's the, so you follow the installation steps, it will install properly. So GrassGIS is being used by QGIS. It's a library for QGIS. Yeah, you will be getting the recorded video sessions after this session. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other any other doubts? So I hope you are getting the gist of what we are trying to do using the Sentinel group. Like we are trying to do GIS analysis using a uh, UAV, like aerial. So because the satellite images. So can anyone tell? I don't want to answer this. Can anyone tell why are we using drones here? Because we already have satellites. So we can do analysis on the satellite images, right? And also we get high resolution satellite images. Like so in the image, you can see the 30 centimeter is a one pixel. So why are we using uh, drones to do analysis? Uh, for research data, we are also giving, getting from satellite data, right? Satellite images are also very nowadays we are getting very high resolution satellite image uh the aerial image is also given in the link so you know so you follow the steps uh, in the documentation in task 1b so you will get all the links there so you have all the data there. accuracy live monitoring yeah live monitoring is the right answer 
so basically satellite images are so they are flying over certain altitudes and uh, so if the satellite images are very close to the earth so it it's time to rot to uh, to rotate it's very fast so so let's say i want to have a data live of a particular area so my satellite is moving very fast as it's very it's located very close to the earth so it, it wants to also avoid the gravitational pull from the earth so we'll try to uh, use its uh, uh, thrusters to rotate faster like to avoid the gravitational pull so so for uh, so th then the temporal the temporal resolution is the time taken for satellite to get at a particular location so that resolution will be uh, it it will be more so to have a very less uh, temporal resolution we want a live data right and also these satellite images are very huge images and we want to so the satellite images are basically raw images so we want to use that raw images to the to the satellite images need to first transmit it to the ground station then there will be people working in the ground station let's say isro or any other space agencies so they will convert those raw images into the format that we want like the geotiff reference it and all that stuff so that takes a very lot of time 15 16 days is the minimum time required for that so that's that's why we are using drones to get a live data okay you can use different sensors like okay yeah that is also the nowadays lidar also used on uh, planes and yeah I'm not able to attend due to exams. Okay, this is a, a recorded session, so you will be given recordings of this. Okay, uh, cool then. Uh, we can end this session if you don't have any doubts. Uh, do you have any doubts? You can clear here, like uh, regarding this session, not the other stuff. The, the other stuff you can ask on the discourse, or there will be a separate live session for task one day. Okay. Thank you guys. Yeah, I hope uh, the session helped you in some way. Uh, there are a few questions. I hope the video will clear your doubt, like how to import the image and all. I'm recording the video. So I'm stopping the recording now.